Hello everyone, my name is Alan from Cyberlab and today will be another video about Home Assistant. Not only today, the next two weeks I think I will post quite a lot of videos for Home Assistant. This is because I'm working with this system, Home Assistant, and I start to implement lots of changes or lots of automation in my home. Because of it, I think that it's quite interesting to post something about Home Assistant. In this video, I will explain about uh, how you can install the wiring guard. Not only how to install the wiring guard, but as well how to install the dock DNS. In this way, you can have a free hosting or a free website that you can use to the dynamic DNS from the dock DNS and you can link to the wiring guard. Uh, the wiring guard only gonna work if your ISP or your Holter allowed you to do port forwarding. Otherwise, you're not gonna work. You can stop now the video and look for the next one that I'm gonna post where I'm gonna explain how you can install the zero two or tail scale. But as I told, we're gonna explain about the wiring guard. If you like this idea and want to know a little bit more about it, we're gonna show. But first of all, don't forget to leave your like, subscribe for the channel, and let's see it. If it was me, I will do the same question. What's wiring guard and why you want to install it? Okay, wiring guard, it's option of VPN. The truth that have a few programs that you can use as a VPN. It's open VPN, it's one, wiring guard is the other one. Everyone that I talk about VPN, they ask, okay, VPN is to hide your IP, to enter some websites or watch Netflix, supposedly in another country, or entering some websites that's only allowed to tracks in that country. This is the VPN. Yes and no. This is one utilization of VPN. What utilization that we're gonna use is to access your network. Basically, you can be anywhere that you want, any place in the world. Through the VPN, you can create a tunnel to access your network. This is the application that we're gonna use the VPN. The other one is exactly the same programs, but different application. So have this one in mind, I will explain why you're gonna use the wiring guard. Basically, the wiring guard, it's the slogan say, Fast, modern, secure VPN tunnel. Why we want to say it? It's because the wiring guard use a cryptography to block this data or to encrypt your data. This way, they are fast and also have less lines to read, so become more fast either. But have some limitations. The wiring guard it's not all perfect because they don't have any audit to check if all the data is correctly or if they don't have a leak of information different for OpenVPN that has been done some audits for it. But the OpenVPN is a good option, but it's a little bit slow compared for WiringGuard. This is because they need more hardware to create this tunnel, different for WiringGuard that you can use in uh, Raspberry Pi, and they will work with maximum speed that you can have at least one gigabyte if you have one gigabyte of uh, internet. So have this one in mind. The first thing that we're gonna do is open our home assistant. Our home assistant have configured some informations, but this one don't worry about it. What you're gonna install is in the supervision. In the supervision, we have some add-ons that we need to add. The first one that we need to add is the DocDNS add-on. But wait, why we need to add the DocDNS? It's really easy. Because your ISP normally change your IP time to time. And if you make all your configuration for IPX, and that you restart your holder or for any reason the IP change, then it will be Y. So if you will try to access your IPX and now you have IPY, they will not access anything and all your configuration is invalid or it's not work anymore. So it's easy to use a dynamic DNS and also the Duck DNS is totally free. Why not use it? So to do the installation of the Duck DNS, we're gonna come in add on stores and we look for this app, the official one, Duck DNS. Have five ratings, so we can only come here and put install. And wait, of course, we need to wait. So let's give some minutes until they finish, faster than I imagine. So now we can come here in documentation. Alan, why you want to come in documentation? Simple. All the time that you install any application in the home system, I suggest you to come in documentation. Why they are really easy and explain how you need to do for the installation. We come here, how to use, how they explain. You use the DocNNS, and in the domain sections, create all your good domains will be end with docdns.org. With this, you copy your token and your domains and register it. And now they have example how to configure it. So you have your token here, 
you have your domains here and they say that will be update each 300 seconds. That's great, now we can come here in configuration and start modify it. What we need to modify? The token that we need to modify and the domain that we need to modify. So I have already my DocDNS open here with all my domains ready to create. I have five only because it's free and I can use five. So I have my current IP as 1.1.1.1. It's not my IP, okay? It's only something that I add here. And has been updated a few seconds ago only because I just updated it. So I come here and copy this user one, come here back in my home assist and paste this user one. So I can put dot docdns.org. Don't forget to put it, otherwise not work. Have this one in mind, I will do the same thing for all my five sites. So we'll do. So I come here, two, three, four, and five. Wonderful. Now I have all my sites great. Here I will put my token and put save. Once that you save with your token, you can come here and click start. Have this one start, we come here in log and see the status. They say that everything's okay and updated. So my new IP address has been updated here. If I come here in the website for the DocDNS and update this page, so now I should have my IP address updated and the time that has been changed. So has been changed 20 seconds ago, that's totally fine. Now we have our DocDNS update in our system, we can look to install the wiring guard. So I come back in my home system, come in add store and go here down and click wiring guard. So we're gonna install this wiring guard. We come here and click install. If you did everything right, you should have this screen. The truth that you cannot do anything wrong, it's only put install. We come here in documentation and we look what we need to do. First thing they say installation, we install the wiring guard, we set the host, what they suggest to use DocDNS, exactly the same one that we use. If you want to choose your own site using the Cloudflare, totally fine, it's your choice, but this one it's using the DocDNS only because it's easy and free. Then you decide the purse that you want to do. One example, my phone, you can put any name that you want and how many users you want as well. You started the wiring guard, you need to set the port forwarding for 51820. If you change your port forward for other port, it's fine, but if you don't have reason, don't need to change. One thing, if you cannot uh, change your port forwarding, so I suggest you choose other choice of a VPN. With the other choice, zero tier and tell scale that I will post in the next video. So if you don't have uh, this option, don't worry, we have another option. Other thing that you need to look, if you look for this director, you have your QR code that they create. This QR code will be used for add in your phone. If you wanted to add in your computer, you need to use the configuration file, but it's basically the same location. Now, to access those, you have two options. You can go directly in the Samba and access it, or you can use the Visual Studio code. In our case, we're gonna use the Visual Studio code because it's just simple. And that after all, you need to install your phone and add the connection. Once that add the connection, put connect and it's done. So here they have some templates that you can use only for guidelines for you. You have here your DuckDNS website, the IP address that you want to use, the DNS that you want to use. This DNS is good if you, perhaps you have the Pi Home install. In this case, I didn't install, but you can have the Pi Home install. You can use the same DNS to go through the Pi Home and that's after use the wiring guard. So if you access any place that you want, you can have the pie hole to block your ads. But in this case, we're not doing this, but it's quite simple. And here all the information. So I have this one in mind and we come here in configuration and we're gonna start to modify all this. Here in the options, they already show the template. But remember, you have two fields to set. The first one will be the self information. The second one, it's the purse information. The self information will be how they will link to your server and the purse will be the user ones. So now we're gonna change our host. I use the user salvelab onedocdnsorg the same one that I use. Our IP address, you can set any IP address that you want. In my case, I will use the 10.1.1.1. The DNS, I can modify, uh, yes, I can, but in this case, I will use exactly the same DNS from my holder. So the red setup, I don't need to add any information here. Now the purse, I can set up my purse. I will do 
Sauber Lab, that will be my first user. The IP address will use exactly the same configuration that I did before, but with the next IP, because I don't want to have conflict with those. So now I can set up my allowed IP or my client IP. Suppose that you want to block something. In my case, I don't want because I already have my private key, my public key. So if I keep those saves, I don't need to set any allowed. But you always have this option. I can come here and put save. Also, I can set up my network. If I want to create a second user, I can come here and do the same thing in user 2. And only don't forget to change your IP address, that's fine and put save again. So now I have two users created. That is totally fine for me. I can come here in info and put start. Once that this has been started, we can come here in log and see the feedback. They say that they are installing all the information. If I come here in refresh, if I see service done, it means that it's working. But don't be convinced. Let's check if it's really work. How we can check it? We can come here in Visual Studio Code and here in Visual Studio Code, we're gonna click with right click in this area and put add a folder to the workspace. Then we put SSL, enter in this file, and that appear wine guard. Inside the wine guard, I can put OK, and they will refresh the page and have here my both connections. First connection will be my Cyber Lab, and the second one will be Cyber Lab 2. Here will be my client configuration, my private key, and my key code. Also, you can access this information through the Samba. How are you gonna do it? I open my Samba. Here my Samba with the same IP address that I used before. I can come here in SSL, open the wiring guard option. I open my Cyber Lab user, and I open my QR code. And here is my QR code. To add the connection to my phone, I will open the application for wiring guard. I already did the download. You need to do the load as well on your phone. If it's Android, you go for Google Store. If it's Apple, you go to Apple Store. It's basic. Everyone knows how to install any application. So we come here and add a tunnel. Once the tattoo, they ask, create from QR code. We create, they appear the page. Go there and add the username. Choose name, I will be Sauber Lab, and I put save. They ask, you want to add? Yes, I want to add. They need to permit it in the iPhone. I don't know how it's working Android system. So now I have my wiring guard installed. So I come here and put it to connect. Once that's connect, they should appear the information. Data received and data sent. That it's receiving sent data, so it's working perfectly. So now we have finished to configure our wiring guard in our phone and everything is working. The same procedure. If I want to install the wiring guard in a computer, I will use this client configuration. So in this video, we show how to configure your wiring guard to your home assistant. Remember, if your ISP or your router don't allow port 40, don't worry, we have another options that I will show in the next video. If you like this video and think that was useful for you and you're gonna apply it, don't forget to leave your like, subscribe for the channel and see you next time. Bye.